Hi and welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to take a look at Ableton Live and Logic Pro X and compare them and see how they work on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. The performance between Ableton Live and Logic Pro X on the 16 inch MacBook Pro and see which is best or which works best. If you're new to this channel, hi, welcome here. My name is Biokib. I make uh, electronic music, interested in uh, computers, both PC and Mac. And uh, I have this YouTube channel where I show my projects, how I make my tracks, and also some computer related stuff. One of the first videos I uploaded to this channel was actually of uh, projects I made in Logic Pro X. I have used Apple products before, but I switched over to Ableton Live because I think the performance of Logic Pro wasn't really that good. I wanted something uh, with some more performance and I used uh, a Windows PC for about five years and I used my Mac only for you know, administrative tasks like maybe editing some photos and email and Facebook and whatnot. But with the release of the 16 inch MacBook Pro and uh, the new direction uh, of Apple where they kind of listen to the feedback, I thought it would be interesting to see how this works today. If you have been following this channel, you may know that I have a video. I will try to link it here or somewhere. At least the link is at least in the description. A video where I show how many contact tracks I am able to run on a Ryzen 3900X system using Ableton Live and using VST's uh, instruments. I'm going to try the same using the 16 inch MacBook Pro and see how that works in Ableton Live and also see how that works in Logic Pro X. And I think you will find the results interesting, at least I did. So let's uh, go to the computer and uh, take a look at uh, the projects. Okay, here we are. So I just wanted to quickly go over the specifications of this Mac. It's a 2.4 gigahertz, eight core Intel i9, 64 gigs of memory, uh, Radeon Pro 5500, eight gigabytes and uh, two terabytes of storage. And yeah, here I have the Ableton Live project I used on my Windows PC testing contact instruments on that one. We uh, got it to around 104 tracks. And here is the basic project with the following project settings. Sample rate is 48 kilohertz. Buffer size is 256 samples. And I'm using the Scarlett 4 in 4 USB uh, audio interface. And when I play this now, it works, but let's just try it. Okay, no audio dropouts or any issues there. So what we can do now is we can take all of these tracks and we can double them up. And let's just reduce the volume on these double tracks so we don't get overwhelmed with audio. Ableton Live will still process these tracks, but the audio will remain silent. So let's try play this and see how it works. We are now up to 34 tracks of contact instruments and uh, different uh, effects uh, down here. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if you noticed it, but uh, as you can hear, the fans on the uh, MacBook Pro ramps up and uh, already heard some crackling in the noise here at uh, 34 tracks. But what if we duplicate them uh, once more? Okay, so now we have 51 tracks of contact instruments and different uh, plugins on each and every chain here. Some compressors and EQ and yeah, just some standard stuff. Let's see how this works.
Yeah, that uh, didn't work uh, that good. As you can see, the audio buffer up in the corner went over 100%. And that's uh, too much for Ableton Live to handle, and you will hear these uh, crackling uh, noises. But what if we... Let's just double check our settings. We are using 48 kHz and 256 samples. Let's try and set it to 512 just for fun. Yeah, even on 512 I can hear some cra crackling at around uh, 51 tracks. But let's now, let's close Ableton Live and let's start up Logic instead. Play the same track but using audio instruments and uh, Logic's effects instead and see how the performance is there. Okay, so here we have Logic. As you can see here I have track 1 to 17 containing the same MIDI data as uh, I used in Ableton Live. If we look in the mixer section here, you can see that I am using contact instruments here as well as in Ableton Live. And I'm using more or less the same patches. In addition, I have the same EQ settings. I'm using uh, the uh, included compressor in Logic. And uh, on the on the channels where I used third-party plugins, I also used that here in Logic, like Valhalla Shimmer and uh, some Fab Filter stuff here, and also in the mixing for the master chain here, I'm using Pro MB this uh, Waves plugin, and uh, yeah, it's basically the same as the Ableton Live project. As for audio settings, audio settings are also the same. It's uh, 256 using the Scarlett audio interface and the project uh, settings are 48 kilohertz as you can see here. So here I have the basic uh, 17 tracks. Let's just play it and show the CPU meter here and see how it works. Yeah, 17 tracks was no problem. You can see we barely touched 25% here. Let's uh, double it up and see where we can go from here. Okay, so now we have 34 tracks. I will just uh, just re reduce the audio and let's try again with 34 tracks. Okay, 34 tracks worked fine, no issue there. And you can see here also in the mixer that there are the same settings, the same instruments, same EQ settings here. L let's try to double it up again. Okay, now we have 51 tracks. That was the limit of Ableton Live where you could hear some audible crackle in the sound. Let's see how Logic Pro is handling the same. That seems like it works fine. Let's try to double it up again here. Okay, so now we have 68 tracks and remember that the Ableton Live project wasn't able to handle 50 tracks. Let's see how this goes.
You can see there in the performance meter here that all of the CPU cores are working pretty hard and I can also hear the fan going here in the background. But let's try and uh, duplicate it once more. Okay, so now I have 85 tracks with contact instruments and on each track I also have some additional processing such as EQ, compressors and uh, some uh, a distortion effects, echo and uh, other stuff as well and some occasional third-party instruments. Let's see if this works and keep an eye on the performance meter here. So there we got the system overload message, uh, meaning that Logic Pro is unable to play back all of these tracks in real time. But remember I am also recording the screen at the same time I am playing Logic here. I am using OBS and OBS is actually using about 10% of the CPU. So when I tested this before recording this video I could go up to about 90 tracks without having this screen recording software running at the same time. So I find these results pretty interesting, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the next section. So uh, let's get back to my face. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. As, as you could see in the video, Logic Pro X was clearly able to handle more tracks than Ableton Live. I have some theories about that, but I don't claim them to be facts, so I just want to get that out of the way. But the Ableton Live project I have was coming from a Windows system, and the Windows system was using VST instruments. And when I remade the track in Logic Pro, I used the audio unit counterpart, and audio unit is Apple's own a kind of VST if you will. And my theory is that these plugins are more optimized in the audio unit version compared to the VST version. Or maybe Logic Pro is able to handle the multi-threading in a better way than Ableton Live. So I at least found these results interesting. It shows me that the 16-inch MacBook Pro is perfectly capable of the music production I am going to do. So I will probably use that for the time being. At least try it for a year and see how it works. But I want to get rid of my Ryzen system. I'm going to have it here for maybe creating new videos, trying new things. And I've been trying to find some time and uh, game on the system. It's perfectly capable of that. I have some quests left to do in uh, Outer Worlds. But with work, real life and this YouTube channel and music production, there's really not that much time to uh, game on the system. So yeah, that's how it is. I hope you liked this video. As I said again, don't take this as do your own research and I'm not saying that Mac or PC is better or Ableton Live or Logic Pro X is better. I'm just recording the data and showing you the results. So with that, please subscribe, click like on the video if you liked it and I will see you in the next one.